My name is Galena and I'm a developer from New York. Today we'll be covering the Sleep Tech Calculator project part of the Learn JavaScript course. Now before we get started, let's take a look at some of the concepts we'll be working with today. To complete this project, you'll need to be familiar with JavaScript functions, the if-else statement, as well as the switch statement. Now let's pull up our project and get started. The sleep debt calculator. We're going to calculate if we're getting enough sleep each week. The objective is we are going to write a calculator that calculates sleep debt. The program will get how many hours of sleep is ideal each night, and then compare that to the actual hours you slept each night of the last week. Then it will calculate the amount of hours over or under they are to their sleep goal. All right, now let's jump right into step one. The first problem to solve is asking the user how many hours of sleep they got each night of the week. You can declare a function that returns any given night's number of hours of rest. Instead of writing seven functions, one for each day of the week, let's write one function with a parameter for the day. Declare a function named get sleep hours with a parameter named day. All right, so let's navigate to our code editor and declare a function named get sleep hours with a parameter named day. Our code block, a semicolon, and we're done with step one. Let's check off the first one and move on to step two. Inside the get sleep hours function, use either an if else statement or a switch statement to return the number of actual sleep hours for each night. For instance, if you got eight hours of sleep on Monday night, calling get sleep hours Monday should return eight. The function should be able to match any of the seven days and return a number for each. Great, so let's navigate to inside of our function. And I'm going to give an example of how we can use an if else and a switch statement. So first, let's do the if else. So we'll write if the day is Monday, and in the code block we want to return 8 as the amount of hours slept that night. Then we would want to do an else if for the following day, Tuesday, and return, let's say, 7. Let's not forget our semicolon, and so on. Then once you've written out all of the days, you will add an else, which will get evaluated if the value of day isn't in any of the conditions. So it isn't Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so on and so forth. Then if we were to use a switch statement, we would use the switch keyword along with parentheses, and day is the value for which we're checking for, our code block, and our first case, which is Monday. And we'll return 8. And then don't forget, we need to use a break. Semicolon. And then we can set up our second case, which is Tuesday. Return 7. Break. And so on. Then once we've written out all the days of the week, we will set up a default, which is very similar to the else. It gets evaluated when none of the above cases hold true. So we would say default return error. And then we would have our closing curly brace for our switch statement. So for this project, I'm going to use the switch statement. So I'm going to get a rid of the if statement above. All right, now let me just finish this switch statement. So next we would have case Wednesday, return eight, break case Thursday, Return, let's do five, break, case Friday, turn eight, break, case Saturday, turn seven, break, and we're almost there. We just need to add a case for Sunday. Return eight. All right, and then we have our default, which will get evaluated if none of the previous values did. 
Now, the reason for the break in our switch statement is that when a case gets evaluated, we don't want our program to check the remaining cases. So we introduce a break or a stop. All right, now let's check off step two and we're ready for step three. Now that you've written a function to get the sleep hours for each night, we need to do three things. Get the total sleep hours that the user actually slept, get the ideal sleep hours that the user prefers, and we want to calculate the sleep debt, if any. To get the total sleep hours that the user actually slept, declare a new function named getActualSleepHours that takes no parameters. All right, so let's navigate to the bottom of my first function, and we can declare our second one. Actually, let me get rid of this white space. Perfect. So we have const get actual sleep hours, and it takes no parameters. We have empty set of parentheses and our code block. All right. Now let's check off step three and move on to step four. Inside the get actual sleep hours function, call the get sleep hours function for each day of the week. Add them all together and return the result. So let's navigate inside of our function and call the get sleep hours function for each day of the week. So that would be get sleep hours for Monday plus get sleep hours for Tuesday, so on and so forth. We're going to do all of the days of the week. We have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and finally Sunday. Perfect, now we've added all of those values together. Now we also want to return this result. So we can add a return keyword right before our first function call. Now we can also do this another way. We can use implicit return. So with implicit return, we wouldn't use the return keyword and we also wouldn't use the curly braces. I will show you that when I call the function, either way will work. So let's check off step four and see what we have so far. Let's call our get sleep hours function and give it an argument for day. So let's use console.log to see the value printed to the console. Call our function. Give it an argument for Monday. So Monday in our switch statement should return 8. Let's end this with a semicolon, save, and we should see 8 in the console. Perfect, and we do. Now let's check if our second function works, our get actual sleep hours function. So console.log get actual sleep hours. Now because this, does not, this function does not have a parameter, we do not need to pass in an argument. So we should just be able to call it like this and see an answer in the console. Awesome, so we have 51, which represents the total amount of hours the user slept last week. Great, now we can move on to step five. To get the ideal sleep hours that the user prefers, declare a function named get ideal sleep hours with no parameters. Inside of the function, declare a variable named ideal hours and set its value to your ideal hours per night. Then return the ideal hours multiplied by seven. You'll want to multiply by seven to get the total hours you prefer per week. So let's navigate to line 39 and declare a function named get ideal sleep hours. And it has no parameters, so we have an empty set of parentheses. And then inside of the function, we want to declare a variable named ideal hours. So let's use let ideal hours and set its value to your ideal hours per night. Let's say 8. And return the ideal hours multiplied by 7. So we want to return ideal hours times seven. 
And we're done with step five. Now let's move on to step six. Now that you can get the actual sleep hours and the ideal sleep hours, it's time to calculate sleep debt. Declare a function named calculate sleep debt with no parameters. Okay, so let's navigate to outside of our previous function and declare calculate sleep debt as our next function. And it does not have any parameters. And inside of its block, we want to create a variable named actual sleep hours, set it equal to the get actual sleep hours function call. So we're declaring a new variable called actual sleep hours, and we're setting it equal to get actual sleep hours function. Then we want to create another variable named ideal sleep hours and set that equal to get ideal sleep hours function call. We have const ideal sleep hours and set that equal to get ideal sleep hours function call. Awesome, now we're done with step six and on to step seven. Now that you have actual sleep hours and ideal sleep hours, you can write a few if-else statements to output the results to the user. The function should fulfill this logic. If actual sleep equals ideal sleep, log to the console that the user got the perfect amount of sleep. If the actual sleep is greater than the ideal sleep, log to the console that the user got more sleep than needed. And if the actual sleep is less than the ideal sleep, log to the console that the user should get some rest. All right, so let's utilize an if-else statement to fulfill this logic. So we're still in our function. Now let's set up the first bullet point. So we have if actual sleep hours, that's our variable, equals to ideal sleep hours, then we want to log to the console the user got the perfect amount of sleep. Console.log you got the perfect amount of sleep. All right, and now let's move on to the next bullet point. If the actual sleep is greater than the ideal sleep, log to the console that the user got more sleep than needed. So we have an else if actual sleep hours is greater than the ideal sleep hours. And we want to log to the console that the user got more sleep than needed. You've got more sleep than needed. Right. And then the last bullet point, if the actual sleep is less than the ideal sleep, logs to the console that the user should get some rest. So we have an else if the actual sleep is less than the ideal sleep. So actual sleep hours is less than the ideal sleep hours, then we want to tell the user that they should get some rest. You should get some rest. Right now, let's not forget our else, which will get evaluated if none of the previous conditions held true. And it will say, error. Something went wrong. Check your code. Great. Now let's check off step seven and move on to step eight. To make this calculator more helpful, log the amount of hours the user is over or under their ideal sleep in the calculate sleep debt functions output. Now before I move on to the next step, I want to check if my function that we just created works. So I'm going to call the function on line 65 and see what the output is. So calculate sleep debt and let's see what we get you should get some rest all right so it looks like we have line 56 that was evaluated so our actual sleep hours was less than the ideal sleep hours so our ideal sleep hours if we recall in our get ideal sleep hours function was 8 times 7 which is 56 and we actually slept 51 hours which is in fact less than 56 and our else if was evaluated correctly all right, now let's move on to step eight. To make this calculator more helpful, we're going to log the amount of hours the user is over or under their ideal sleep and the function's output. Okay, so let's navigate back to our function and take a look at our first if. 
statement. So there is no difference in hours here. So we're not going to change anything here, but we will change something in the following else if. Since we have actual sleep hours more than ideal sleep hours, let's tell the user how many more hours of sleep they actually got this time. So let's navigate to inside of our string and say you've got the difference of ideal sleep hours minus actual sleep hours more this week. Hours this week. Let's not forget our quotes. And I'm just going to add an of sleep this week. We've got some value, more hours of sleep this week. All right, now let's move on to the next elf stuff and see what we should change. You should get some rest. So this is the case when the user doesn't get enough hours of sleep. So let's say you should get some rest because you've slept ideal sleep hours minus actual sleep hours hours less than you should have this week. All right, now I'm going to add a space right here, and that should look good. Now let's check off step eight and move on to step nine. On the last line of the program, start the program by calling the calculate sleep debt function. So we already have that written out on line 65, so I'm just going to save and see the output in the console. You should get some rest because you've slept five hours less than you should have this week. And that is the output we expected to see. Remember, we have 56 hours to be the ideal amount of hours slept during the week, and we only slept 51, so we are five hours short. And now we've completed the project. Let's check off step nine. And feel free to navigate back throughout your program and change the values to see how your code runs accordingly. I'm actually going to do that and navigate back to my switch statement and change some of these return values to see if we can get a different output. So let's say we've slept two hours on Saturday, four hours on Friday, but then we slept 12 hours on Sunday and then 10 all of the other days. All right, now let's run our code. Okay, great, so we have 53, which is still less than 56, and we got three hours less than we should have. All right, let me just amp these up a little bit just to check if our other else if will evaluate. Awesome, you got 15 more hours of sleep this week. So 15 looks right, but I don't want that negative there. So let me go back to my else if and see what I can change. Ah, yes, so because actual sleep hours is the larger value, I'm going to put that one first. All right, and now we should have the appropriate output. Awesome, and now the minus is gone and everything looks good. And with that, I highly recommend that before you move on to the next project to always check that your program works as expected by testing different values and that your code is in fact bug proof. I hope this walkthrough was helpful and I will see you next time. Happy coding.